Well, I'm confused. This is ReZero after all, this, so that's pretty normal. Also, I'm going to ask a lot of questions in this video. Please don't spoil anything beyond this point in the anime. I'm an anime-only viewer, and just laugh at me not knowing. Alright, so this episode we got a lot, and it was pretty good. Though it's honestly hard for me to say it's wonderful because there's so much setup and the events don't make sense. Yet. So, I want more, definitely. And I have talked to friends who have read the web novel and they thought it was wonderful, so yeah, that's a good sign. Alright, let's get into some of the details here. The episode started with Krush and Felix bidding Amelia and Subaru farewell. It was cool here seeing how the relationship between Krush and Amelia had grown and how they're more partners now as opposed to being enemies. Granted, Krush has also lost her memory, so she doesn't remember Amelia being an enemy, but still. I also liked Amelia's line here about not wanting to always need saving, but instead being the one to help people. And it shows her growing and is a recurring theme throughout the season, which I hope she does get some chances to really help people to shine, to be the great character that she can be. I also liked the mood of the scene, how it was calm, peaceful. We probably won't get too many scenes with that. We also got an interesting tidbit from Felix about how Subaru should not use his gate for at least two months. And then Subaru made a comment about how things should slow down and hoped that he didn't set a flag by saying so. Yeah, he's going to have an interesting couple of months for sure. <laughs> Alright, so on the way back, we got some more cute moments between Subaru and Amelia. And I like seeing how comfortable Amelia is around Subaru and how she's starting to understand what he is thinking even when he doesn't say it. Like how she knows how worried he is about Rem. <laughs> okay, so my friend is sending me some uh, pictures from the ReZero manga. I think I'm going to put them in the video. It's nothing that will spoil beyond this episode, just like this part of the episode that the manga covered. Aww. <laughs> okay, the manga is super cute for this chapter too. Anyway, where were we? Well, yeah, Amelia makes a comment how both she and Super are selfish, how they both want what they're after for their own reasons. And I find this interesting, how it shows how they could be doing good things for selfish reasons. But I don't feel like this invalidates the good that they are doing as well. It's like, there's definitely a nuance here of like, when people do good, they typically are doing it because they want to. They're fulfilling a desire. So yes, they're helping others, but in a way they're doing it for themselves. Again, very interesting uh, nuance here. And it shows how Amelia is seeing herself as she's not a good person despite the good that she might be doing because she's selfish. Very interesting. So when they get to the village, we learn that Ram and the others went to the sanctuary, which seems to be very important, though I basically know nothing about it. I'm like, where is it? Who all went? We know Ram and Roswell, but who else? And why did they go there? Subaru and Amelia both think the other know about it, but they don't. So they drag Otto to the mansion so he can help figure everything out. And then when they get to the mansion, Frederica is there to greet them, who is a maid who is asked to return by Ram. What's really interesting here is the reason that Ram asked for her help is because the place was a mess due to Ram disappearing. Obviously. But it shows the effects that Ram being taken is not known by the others because their memory of her is also gone. And I'm actually a bit sad we did not get Ram here at the mansion to react to what happened to Ram. But I'm guessing we'll definitely get that a bit more down the road. We also learned from Frederica that there are two people that Roswell trusts enough to know what he's planning. Those two being Ram and the great spirit of the library, who is Beatrice. Lots of information here. First, a question. Does Roswell also trust Rem? Or is it only Ram? Rem might be also included, but because Rem was wiped from everyone's memories, they would not know that. But it also felt like Roswell and Ram may have had a closer connection than he did with Rem. So yeah, there's that. And we also learned that Beatrice is a great spirit. Which actually explains a lot. Sort of. Actually, not really. But from this we know that Beatrice is not a human. And being a spirit, she's more like Puck than any of the other characters. Which explains why she likes Puck so much. They're both spirits. And it also explains why she is so powerful and knowledgeable. Though the thing that it doesn't explain is why the library has a great spirit and what her connection is with Roswell. Like, was uh, she born a great spirit in the library? Or was she a great spirit who just happened to decide to reside in this library for whatever reason? And it also explains why she has butterflies in her eyes. Wait a second. 
Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself here, but the butterflies in her eyes make me wonder. Is there some connection between the butterflies in her eyes and the butterflies in the opening? Probably not. But then again, this is a zero. So probably. The question is, what is the connection? And we also learn from her that she has a connection to petal geese. And she acts very weird. First of all, she wonders how he got that, which that does make sense. But she's sad to hear that Sloth is dead and that he left her behind. And she also asks what happened to his witch's factor. And then asks what Roswell is doing. There's clearly a connection here, but we don't know what. Beatrice directs Subaru to the sanctuary if he wants answers. And she says that if he goes there, he'll learn about Roswell's intentions, the meaning of the, of the gospel, and the answers about the witch factor. And then she basically says she refuses to answer anything else because that is her right, and shoves him out of the library, where Subaru then crashes an auto. Poor Otto. What did he do to deserve to be wrapped up in this story? Then we have uh, Friedrich making arrangements for them to get to the sanctuary, with Otto leading them. Though I did like here how Otto is exposed, like the reason he's helping them so much is because he wants to get in good graces with Roswell. It goes back to the idea of doing good things for selfish reasons. That's like what Amelia said she was doing, what Subaru is doing, and what Otto is doing. So yeah, I don't think it makes Otto bad at all. And I definitely feel sorry for Otto with like everything he's being thrown through. So yeah, Otto's great. And here they're also warned about Garfield, who I get the feeling will be a great character. I have a friend who goes by Garfield online because he likes the character so much. So yeah, that person you definitely need to worry about. So he's also the best. Then we see that Petra has become a maid, and I like the scene here where she gave him a handkerchief as like a good luck charm or a way of wishing him well. And I feel like that's also going to be something important, but even if it isn't, it's just like another cute, fun scene. And with the direction Free Zero, I'm sure is going, we need scenes like this early on. But as we leave, we see Friedrich was in fact doing all this because Roswell directed it. Which of course begs the question, what did he direct? Is she truly leading them to the sanctuary or something else? It does seem like Roswell is on Amelia's side to a degree. So I don't think Roswell has plans to harm Amelia or Subaru, but he is up to more than we know right now. Puck has also disappeared as well, and we get a flashback to Puck telling Subaru to take care of Amelia. So more questions. Where did he go? What would make him leave Amelia and trust her with Subaru? I mean, Puck does seem to trust Subaru to at least a degree, but enough to abandon Amelia? There has to be a good reason for this. So what's he doing? Is he also involved with this trip to the sanctuary? Or is he going after the witch's cold? I can't see him taking revenge for Rem, but they were going after Amelia. So it would not surprise me if he would in turn go on the offensive against them. So yeah, more questions. And I love the scene that here with Amelia and Subaru. I basically love all their scenes. But Amelia makes a comment saying that she will protect Subaru and then Subaru calls her manly. Which is just great. Their relationship is great. Uh, by the way, I'm on Team Amelia now. Sorry, Rem. You are awesome, but Amelia. And I also love how Subaru noticed how nervous Amelia was. And this just shows another example of how the two of them really get each other. Subaru also mentioned that he had heard Roswell saying that he was going to go meet Garfield, which I don't recall seeing in Season 1, and I think I would have remembered it since I just rewatched it recently. So maybe that was just off camera, or was like cut from the anime, so they're sort of backfilling that here. Or maybe there's just like a weird translation here with the subtitles. I don't know. Then we have the medallion that Emilia got beginning to glow, so Super gets a bad feeling about it, and then is about to throw it out the window. Which is weird, like what is his bad feeling? What was it going to do to Emilia? What did he think it was going to do to her? But before he can throw it, Amelia just collapses, and then the medallion teleports him somewhere in the forest. So, like, what did the medallion do to Amelia? Where did it take Subaru? Were they both supposed to go there? Where is Amelia? Is she just back there somewhere else, or teleported somewhere else? I don't know. But then, before you can get any more answers, we get Subaru chasing a pink-haired girl who appears to be an elf. Then when chasing her, he finds a weird ruin. But before he can explore that much, he's taken to Echidona's place. I don't know what this place is. It's, yeah. And most interestingly, Echidona reveals herself to be the Witch of Greed. 
So, yeah, I have a theory here. This actually ties back into the trailer, which this like the trailer had this like last minute in it. So I want to be careful last episode not to spoil it in case people didn't watch this trailer. But yeah, it's only episode two. And we got it. So, yeah. Anyway, my theory is that Ekidona is the one who brought Subaru to this world. and is the one that gave him the power of return by death. Up until this part, it seemed to be Satalia, because she is the Witch of Envy, and Subaru has the Witch's scent on him. But did they ever say, Witch Witch? I did not mean for that to be a pun. But the reason I believe this to be the case is because the Witch of Envy has been asleep all this time. And Echidona is not. Echidona seems to be reaching out to Subaru here. So there is a connection. And I also feel that greed may fit Subaru better than Envy because Subaru wants everything. He wants to save both Amelia and Ram and everyone else. And so that's definitely greedy, right? Though maybe I'm wrong. Echidona seemed to be surprised by Subaru's desire that it wasn't something she did not know up to that point. And I would think that if she did bring him here, she would have a better idea of the type of person he is and what he's after. Though maybe not. I don't know. Either way, I want to see more, and I really want to see whatever conversation they will have next episode. And then we get the opening at the end of the episode, which is great. I actually am thinking about doing like a whole breakdown of the opening, what I think it's trying to show. I don't know. I also think it's kind of funny that we see the opening for the first time at the end of episode two. Like, I know some shows won't show the opening in the first episode, but then they show it at the beginning of the second, and some shows will uh, give their opening at the end of the first episode. But nope, not ReZero. It goes at the end of the second one. ReZero is pretty great. So that's my thoughts on this episode. A lot to cover, and I didn't go super deep with any of it because there's so much. And even then, I know I missed some stuff. So yeah, let me know what your thoughts are on the episode. I'll definitely be doing more of, uh, videos on this as the series comes out, as it's fun to talk about. Though I also feel like this is the show that's better to watch all at once, because otherwise it will be really painful. It already is. Let me know what you thought of the episode, though. I'm curious, and please don't post spoilers uh, beyond this episode. And I will see you next time.